Hey y'all, so in this video, I'm gonna share four documents you need before you start fundraising for your nonprofit. Let's get into it. Hey y'all, this is Tiffany with Boss on a Budget. I help new and small nonprofits get up and running. So if you need help with your nonprofit, make sure you are subscribed to this channel because I drop videos every week. And so today, I just wanted to do a quick video to share four key documents that can help you with your fundraising and that I recommend you don't really go deep into fundraising until you have these documents in place or at least some elements of these documents. So at the end of this video, I'm also going to share three ways I recommend you raise money as a new nonprofit if you can't figure out where to start and what to do. So I'm going to share my quick strategy at the end that can give you like a, a framework for looking at it. But now I'm going to walk through each of these documents and they build on each other. Okay, so I'm doing them in order so that you can follow the process and you can create them for yourself. I will also say that all of these documents there's an explanation of them in my nonprofit startup workbook. So if you need help with launching your first year, I have a startup workbook that has over 10 worksheets that have different areas you need to focus on when you're starting and launching your nonprofit. So you can grab that workbook in the description box below. Okay, so let's get started. So if you're really trying to get serious about fundraising, the first thing you need to do is create a case statement. Now, if you watch me on Instagram or if you're in my private membership where I assist people in raising money, you know I talk about this constantly and this is the first document that I have people work on. A case statement is basically a document that helps you state your case. It helps you think through how you're going to persuade somebody to give to your organization. So it makes you think through all the things, all the elements that you would use in an argument to convince somebody that giving to your organization is a good idea. And this is a foundational document that any fundraising staff person will tell you that they do to get their minds right before it's time to start fundraising. And just think about it. When you're trying to raise money, especially in a systematic way or you're trying to do it in an organized way, you got to you got to get yourself together. You got to say to yourself, OK, what's the key message here? What am I going to be talking about? What am I going to be focusing on? And you also want to make it compelling because it's not enough to tell people give to my organization or ask people give to a good cause. That's just not that's not cutting it in 2022 and it's not going to cut it in any year, honestly, no matter what year you're watching this. So you got to really do the work to think about why would somebody give to this organization over someone else's? And this trips people up because they're like, we're not in competition. And I'm not saying you're not in competition, but in the moment that somebody has $5 and they have the opportunity to either give it to you or to give it to that other organization, what are you going to say to convince them that you're the right organization at the right time? That's what a case statement does for you. So it takes you through a journey. It takes you through a journey of figuring out who are you serving? What's their problem? What are they struggling with? Because anytime you talk about raising money, you want to highlight the problem that's being solved by their donation. So you want to really nail down and think through in human terms, like think about it in, from a person's perspective, what the problem is and why it's such a huge problem and why it's an urgent problem, why it needs to be addressed right now. And you going through the practice of writing that out and figuring out how to say that will get you organized when it's time to develop your fundraising appeals or write your grant proposals, all of that, because you have an organized way of thinking about how to talk about the needs of your organization when it comes to fundraising. So your case statement is the first document you should have in place. And again, as a plug, if you need a basic structure for a case statement, there's one as a bonus worksheet in my nonprofit startup workbook. Number two is your budget. I actually like creating budgets and I, I was about to say for fun. I'm not going to say it's fun, but I actually like doing it. And I like doing it for people because it helps put on paper what you're trying to accomplish. See, too many people when they're thinking about their budgets, they just are throwing numbers at the wall or they're just putting stuff in because they have to submit a grant real quick or they heard someone say you have to have a budget so they're just putting something on paper but a budget especially your first budget shouldn't be done like that your budget should have in mind everything that you're trying to accomplish 
All it is, is a representation of your goals and numbers. So you say you want to serve 100 people. What does that look like to serve 100 people in a year? How much does that cost in materials or in rent or in utilities or in staffing? And by asking yourself those questions, you begin to fill out the numbers and see in real time what it takes for your organization to run. And I love doing budgets because it creates a sense of possibility. It creates a sense of hope, right? It makes you realize that if we had this money, then we'd be able to function in this way. And that's a great thing to look forward to. That's a great sense of hope to have. Now, you probably were watching this video and didn't think about budgets in that way. But that's why I like doing them because it helps you to dream. It helps you to think through what can be really possible instead of just saying, oh, okay, maybe it'll be $10,000 to run this. But you can start being intentional and saying, no, our participants need this level of service. In order to get to this level of service, we need this in place at this time. And even if what you need to provide an optimal service you know you're not gonna be able to raise that money realistically in that year. At least you can think about it so you can phase it in. So maybe you're creating reserves or maybe you're starting at a smaller level and then when the money starts coming in, your budget grows and grows and grows. So the second piece that you need to have in terms of raising money is absolutely your budget because your budget is the roadmap to tell you what you need to raise. So I don't recommend you start fundraising without a budget because you need to be able to tell people how much money you need and what you need to spend it on. Plain and simple. The third document is your fundraising plan. Sometimes this is called a development plan. And just know when it comes to fundraising, a lot of terms are thrown out there. Sometimes they're used interchangeably. Sometimes there are like minor differences between them. So I try to explain when I'm using terminology that you may see, you know, talked about in a different way in another space. So I consider any way to raise money as fundraising, but not everybody does that. So I consider writing grants as a part of a fundraising strategy. So not everybody sees it that way. Some people say fundraising plan and they only think about asking individuals for money. So just want to throw that caveat out there so we're clear on what I'm saying, okay? So when I'm talking about a fundraising plan or development plan, it includes all of the strategies that you plan to put in place to raise money. Maybe you're going to get your board to submit monthly dues, right? You're gonna like phrase it that way. And that's one way you're gonna bring in money. Maybe you're gonna ask individuals for money at the end of the year because you know it's the most prominent time of the year to ask, right? People are really giving at the end of the year. So you know you're gonna do a campaign. Maybe you're trying to get better at grants. So you're going to try to win five grants totaling this amount of money this year. Every single thing you've decided as an organization that you're going to do to raise money goes into this plan. And it's a plan. So it's not just putting wishes on a paper. It's saying we're going to do this campaign during this time of the year and we need to do these activities in order to get to that goal and these are the people responsible for doing them and these are our timelines. These are the deadlines that we're putting in place and then it's going back and holding yourself accountable. So for a lot of you who are trying to figure out well, what do we talk about in our board meetings? We should only have one board meeting a year. I don't agree with that especially as a startup because how could you? But if you're trying to figure out ways to get your board members engaged, how about holding ourselves accountable for the plans you put in place? So one of the things you can do is assess throughout the year where you are when it comes to your fundraising relative to what you put in your fundraising plan. So you said you were gonna have some things completed by a certain time of the year. Did it happen? If it didn't, what happened? What can you do differently? Boom, okay? So that's one activity that you can do. Also, if you're looking for ideas, minus what I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video, I did do a video where I shared examples of how you can raise money. So I'm linking that above. If you need some pointers, if you need some ideas to think about, make sure you check out that video because I do give a lot of examples in that one. So the last document you need is a marketing plan and sometimes I call it a communications plan. And again, when it comes to terminology, people who work in marketing may see differences between those. But for me, I see them as the same thing. It's essentially, how are you gonna stay visible? right? How are you going to intentionally get in front of people in your local community, online, and how are you gonna stay in their faces and stay relevant? What are the different mediums or formats you're gonna to use to do that? 
How are you going to stay in touch with people? How are you going to follow up with people? How are you going to be seen? What are the methods and things you're putting in place to get that done? So some of the things you may want to have on that is absolutely a newsletter. You need to have some kind of email marketing something so that you can send regular communications and stay relevant to people who decide to join your mailing list. You should be doing presentations regularly in your local community. You should be reaching out to new partners every month to get in front of other organizations or other people who can potentially partner with you. You should be reaching out to people online on a regular basis to build an online presence. And depending on the type of work you do, one may make more sense than the other, or one may have more weight than the other. And it just depends on your mission and it depends on your skill sets. Maybe you're really good at interpersonal stuff, like you're really good one-on-one -on -one with people and you suck at stuff online. That's probably a lot of people <laughs> watching. Side note, like you can't get better even if you suck right now at doing stuff online. But if you feel like your strong suit is, you know, meeting people in person, then maybe you want to lean more heavily on those activities and delegate the online stuff to someone else. So I'm just trying to give you ideas. But the bottom line is you need some kind of document or plan that states how you're going to get in front of people regularly, intentionally, and how you're gonna stay relevant. You're gonna stay on their minds, all right? So as a quick recap, before I share my three suggestions for where to start when you're raising money, you need to have a case statement, a budget, a fundraising plan, slash development plan, and a marketing slash communications plan. All right, so here's my strategy that you should focus on. If you're like, well, where do I start, Tiffany? Where should I go when I know I need to raise startup money? You can use my GIF framework, G-I-F. G stands for grants, I stands for individuals, and F stands for fee for service, okay? Grants refer to smaller local community-based grants. Do not go immediately for large funders. Don't do that. Start in your local community because you will be really surprised about how many organizations actually fund local projects in your backyard. So start with smaller local community-based grants and start with organizations where you shop or organizations that you frequent a lot. The I is for individuals. You should, in my opinion, be asking people for money as a new nonprofit. And I wanna be clear, not every nonprofit leans on donations. Not every nonprofit relies on donations from individuals a lot. So you may be asking, well, maybe that's not what I want to do. I just want to focus a lot on grants. The reason why I'm saying you should, regardless of where, where you end up making more of your money, focus on individuals is because your fundraising strategy is also a visibility strategy. And when you're new and you need to get in front of people, your efforts to raise money can raise your visibility, expand your network and get you in front of people. So the work that you have to do to convince people to give, to, to convince them to trust you, is the same work you're gonna to have to do anyway to get people to discover you. So for me, fundraising and marketing go hand in hand. You gotta stay visible, you gotta stay in front of people in order for them to trust you to give. So that's why I recommend reaching out to individuals as a startup, because it's a great strategy for you to get in front of people when you're trying to build your network. And one of the best ways to do this using fundraising is to use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. I talk a lot about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So if you need help or like a primer on it, I'm linking a video above that can walk through the steps for you. And then finally, F stands for fee for service. So that could be some kind of earned income. So some way you earn money, it's not gifted or granted to you. You provide a service or you provide a product and you have unrestricted money after that. There are many different ways you can go with this. You could sell t-shirts or sell products. Just remember, anytime you start to sell something versus you know getting donations or grants, there are other implications you need to be mindful of, like uh, unrelated business income tax, like all the things associated with sales tax in different states. Just be mindful of that. So I'm just gonna say that. But you could also provide a service to organizations. You could provide training or consultation to organizations. It doesn't necessarily have to be you selling a product, but it just all has to center and focus on your mission, right? And even some things that are not mission related, you can get away with if it doesn't consume 
all of the activities of your organization. If it's just a small percentage of the work that you're doing as an organization. So there's a lot to dissect with that one. So guess what? Yes, I do have a video that talks about that. So I am linking that above and also putting it in the description box. Y'all, I hope you got a lot from this video. I was sharing a lot of information. I hope you had your notebook ready because I had a lot to say. But if you need more help, you can always visit me at www.bossinabudget.com and I will see you in the next video.